Achieving adequate spray coverage is critical to the effectiveness of contact herbicides. Tom Wolfe is a research scientist with Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada at the Saskatoon Research Station. His research looks at nozzle selection, configuration, water volumes and pressures to help producers achieve the kind of spray patterns and coverage required for optimum performance of crop protection products. Agricultural spraying has undergone nothing but a revolution in the last uh, 10 years or so. Uh, 10 years ago, uh, producers really only had one nozzle choice available to them. That was a conventional nozzle that had uh, a good track record of performance but also had drift issues. Since that time, uh, they have, uh, the industry has introduced low drift nozzles, air induced low drift nozzles primarily, that have now reached uh, a, a large mar uh, segment of the market. In Western Canada, for example, our surveys indicate that up to 50% of uh, producers are using air induced low drift nozzles. Now, that revolution has not under undergone uh, without some uh, growing pains. Uh, one of the important issues has been that the nozzles can be used improperly, resulting in poor uh, performance of the pesticide. So what I'd like to go over with you quickly is about four key rules of nozzle selection that help a producer decide what the right nozzle is for their needs. And the first of those four rules is, uh, is to spend some time making the right selection in the first place. There's a number of different nozzles out there. Uh, and there it's, it, you need to consult with an expert to identify the right nozzle for you. We're going to be spraying with the four major nozzle types that are available in the Canadian market. Uh, the four types are the conventional nozzle, which is the old standard, the pre-orifice nozzle, a low drift version, a low pressure air induced nozzle, and a high pressure air induced nozzle. Okay, we're going to start with a conventional nozzle. It's an 80 degree flat fan. This nozzle is designed to work well between about 20 and, four, and 60 psi. We're spraying at 40 right now. When you go to lower pressures, the pattern does collapse and the spray gets coarser. When you go to higher pressures, the pattern forms nicely, but it can become very drift prone. And that's a problem with this nozzle. This is also a conventional flat fan, but it has a 110 degree fan angle. The wider fan angle allows a wider pressure range. For example, if I go to lower pressures, I can maintain a good pattern at lower pressures than I could with the 80 degree nozzle. Problem with these tips is that they get excessively fine at higher pressures, particularly the 110, more so than the 80. So drift can become a real problem at these kinds of pressures. This is a pre-orifice nozzle. It uses a pre-orifice to reduce the internal pressure of the tip, and that reduces drift. You can see that there's less drift with this nozzle at uh, the conventional pressure of 40. When we go low, we do lose the pattern a little bit more rapidly than before, and therefore we have to actually elevate the pressure slightly in general. I'm at 40, I'm at 50. This is a good pressure range to operate these tips. At higher pressures, like all nozzles, they become more drift prone, but they never again reach that potential that we had with the other tips. This is the uh, low pressure air induced tip. It's just like a pre-orifice tip, except it uses a venturi in the middle to introduce air into the mix, and that makes the spray coarser. At 40 PSI, much coarser than what we've seen before. If we go to lower pressures here, it becomes problematic almost right away, giving us an unacceptable pattern. But if we go to the optimal pressure range for this tip of uh, say 50, 60, 70 PSI, we reach a nice pattern with a nice spray that is fairly low drift, but still provides good coverage. Going back down to about 40 PSI. 
This is a high pressure air induced nozzle. This is the same design as a low pressure except it's uh, designed to be even coarser and therefore, therefore requiring even higher pressures. You can see how coarse this nozzle is compared to what we saw before. It's not designed to be operated at these low pressures, but I'll show you what happens to the pattern. It virtually disappears. We should be well above 40 with these kinds of tips. 60, 80 PSI is ideal. These nozzles even work quite well at 100 PSI. The drift potential increases with higher pressures, but it never goes as high as it was with the conventional tip. The following demonstration illustrates the range of coverages that can be obtained with modern nozzle selections. The first example uses a conventional flat fan nozzle spraying approximately 100 liters per hectare at 40 PSI. The second example uses an air induction nozzle again spraying approximately 100 liters per hectare at 40 PSI. The paper on the left shows the results of a conventional flat fan nozzle producing very fine droplets and achieving thorough coverage. This spray would be very prone to drift. The paper on the right shows the results of an air induction nozzle producing a coarser spray that will be much less prone to drift, but achieves less thorough coverage. For some products, especially contact herbicides, proper efficacy may not be achieved with coverage like this. Using increased water volumes and higher spray pressure will provide better coverage. Growers must decide the right balance between minimizing drift and achieving adequate coverage based on the coverage requirements for effective performance of the product they are spraying and their tolerance for drift. Here is an illustration of the relationship between water volume and spray quality. Growers can choose nozzles that produce droplets ranging in size from fine to extra coarse. Tom Wolf recommends growers double check their sprayer performance by making an in-field pass over water sensitive paper and comparing their results with this chart. Are your results in the top left or bottom right? You can arbitrarily draw a line below which your results should not fall. However, you can't draw a single line for all products. The line will move depending on what you are spraying and your tolerance for drift. For products like contact herbicides, ensuring your spray pattern is similar to those towards the top left corner is important for product performance. Using higher water volumes and the proper spray pressures for your nozzles will help reduce efficacy issues with these types of products. In conclusion then, the uh, air-induced low-drift nozzle can be successful if you follow these four rules. Uh, they are, spend some time selecting the right nozzle for your needs, consult with an expert. The second rule, make sure you operate the nozzles at the right pressure. Often that means a higher pressure. 60, 80 or 100 PSI is not uncommon. The third rule is, use the appropriate water volume. If you go to a coarser spray, you may have to increase your water volume slightly. And finally, uh, make sure your pattern is appropriate. Oftentimes, we, uh, we need a wider, a larger overlap underneath the, the boom compared to a conventional nozzle. Our research indicates that if you follow these four rules, you will be successful using your pesticides and protect the environment.